flew over London Bridge this morning and we're now at Earl's Court, right before the reveal. Earl's Court, of course, is the home of the London Motor Show, but it's been a while before an important car has been unveiled here. To say that the XC is an important car for Jaguar would be a gross understatement. Tata Motors acquired Jaguar Land Rover in 2008 and they've shown a huge amount of faith in the two iconic British brands. That faith has been returned in spades because the sales of Jaguar Land Rover are keeping Tata Motors alive and well today. Land Rover and especially Range Rover have been posting huge sales numbers across the world. Jaguar, however, hasn't been quite as fortunate. While sales are growing, they are paling in comparison to Range Rovers. The XC, therefore, is a hugely important model for Jag. It breaks into the volume segment as far as the luxury car market is concerned and it takes on the likes of the BMW 3 Series, the Audi A4 and the Mercedes C-Class. So there's massive competition but there's a huge amount of anticipation behind the Jaguar XC. So let's see what Jag has in store for us. Wow, that was a launch and a half. We saw some star performers, we saw a musical. For Christ's sake, we even saw robots doing a dance in the end. And that just goes to show what an important car the XE is for Jaguar. And frankly, the pictures just do not do this car justice. It is so much more aggressive, it is so much more in your face, in the flesh, than when you see a picture of it. So let's go talk to the man who sketched this car in the first place. So here we are with the man behind the lines, Ian Callum. So Ian, tell us a little bit about the car. Well, we've been working on it for nearly four years now and uh, it, was, it was quite a challenge because it's a pragmatic car, it's a smaller car. It fits into the segment which is hugely demanding in terms of package and what people expect out of it. But because it's a Jaguar, we wanted it to be spirited and we wanted it to be sporty and we wanted it to appeal to people who want an alternative to the other cars in that segment with the sportiness but also the practicality. It's a fine line, so that's what the car is all about. We saw an incredible launch presentation right now uh, and there was a young protagonist in the show who at one point says there's too much pressure, uh, I don't know if I can do it. Uh, do you ever feel like that? Yeah, I do feel like that sometimes, you know, and I think everybody expects you to come up with the next great big thing. And it's not just me, it's my team as well. But uh, yeah, just, uh, you just have to keep a clear head. But yeah, I do feel that pressure, especially for this brand that I know and love so well. So the demand of myself is very, very high. It's not just from other people, it's myself. And I think that that young man that said that was feeling it within himself too. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's a huge responsibility looking after a brand like this. You know, it, it, was, it was in a bad place a few years ago, it was yeah. kind of retro, it was old fashioned. Yeah. And uh, I have seen it my responsibility to bring it back to where it should be. And this car does it completely for me. This yeah. is the ultimate sports flip car. But back to your question, yeah, of course I feel pressure. It's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of expectations on this model as well. Huge expectations. When you think about uh, this car, the production of it, this car would potentially double our volume in the space of a few months. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? But let's see the double the volume. So the, the, the expectations of this car from an economic point of view, production point of view, is enormous. So it has to fit a very, very strong bill. So with the F-Type, you challenged the engineers in a number of ways. You had them produce these really beautiful sharp creases. Uh, what are the challenge, challenges that you pose to your engineers with this Well, one? we wanted the car to look sporty. We were, we were actually involved in the building of this architecture. So we had a very, very sort of uh, a good dimension between the front wheel and the, and the driver. So we get a long bonnet. That's something we wanted. Yeah. I know it sounds a bit old fashioned, but it works. We had the cab rear wood in it, yeah. the wheels out front. Yeah. So that was the challenges I gave to the engineers. But you know, they loved the idea of it and they actually produced what we wanted. The other big challenge, of course, is that aluminium is very difficult to work. Yeah. You can't get the draw or the stretch. Yeah. Uh, it's a monocyte, which made life even more difficult, more complicated. 
And so bit by bit, working by work, working, you know, together, collaboration, we got there. You have to remember, the engineers and the designers at Jaguar both want the same thing. Yeah. They want a great looking car. Yeah. It looks very much like the XJ uh, from in front. Is that deliberate? I mean, it, it does look a lot more aggressive. Uh, but is that deliberate to make it look more luxurious, uh, so to speak, yeah, than some of the other cars in the segment? We, well, it's quite a complicated story. We had a lot of debate about, do we go and revolutionize the, the design of a Jaguar? Do we do a whole new front end? And the answer for my liking was, no, we don't. Not yet. You know, I think people in India are now becoming more familiar with Jaguars. Certainly in the UK, you see them everywhere, yeah. XFs are everywhere. But if you go anywhere else in the world, I drive an XJ in, in America sometimes. People say, oh, it's a new Jag. It's four yeah. years old. Yeah. I drive an XJ and an XF in America. People say it's a new Jag. It's six years old. Yeah. We're not well enough known yet to go and start changing the world. Well, yeah. We have to have a continuous look to the car. The grille, though, is something that, as far as I'm concerned, for as long as I will be in charge of Jaguar design, we will not change that. This is a grille that we've established. It's our, yes, it will evolve in different shapes yeah. and sizes, yeah. but that's where I want to keep it for the time being. The lamps may change in the future, of yeah. course. So what does this car say on the road? Oh, it says sporty. It says sporty, and it says a little bit of look at me. You know, I might be an ordinary, practical, pragmatic family salute, but there's an edge of that that says, I am spirited and I'm very sporty and I'm just different from all the rest, which is what Jag should be. Well, thank you very much, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.